How do you learn to eat all the foods guilt-free when you're intermittent fasting? Let's talk about it. It was really important to me when I went on this weight loss journey to learn how to eat all the foods. I did not want to eliminate like a certain food group or, or go low carb or anything like that. And the reason for this was for one, I realized I was the type of person who always went back to eating carbs and things like that. And another thing was I started to look around and I realized I was resentful of the people around me who seemed to be able to eat all the foods and stay at a healthy weight. And I, I started to say, you know, they're no different than me. Like we're, we're all human beings. So there's got to be something that I'm just not seeing right now. And because I had dieted my entire life, you know, from the time I was six, when I went on like my first diet until like 31, I was always on this constant cycle of, you know, losing weight with a diet and then regaining it, sometimes maintaining it, but usually on one of those extremes, either dieting or weight gain. So because I had been on so many different diets, I was just driving myself crazy, basically. With every bite of food I put in my mouth, I always just felt stressed or, you know, or just completely not caring at all and, and, and going kind of hog wild. I realized I'm, I don't need to read another diet book. I, I instead started to just observe the world around me. And one thing I noticed was my husband, he is a skinny guy and sometimes he would make me a sandwich. And like when he made me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, he would like slather on the peanut butter and he would put, you know, a whole bunch of jelly on there which is totally different than the way I make my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Like I would always, you know, try to skimp on the peanut butter and skimp on the jelly and, you know, try to make it as low calorie as possible. Or, you know, like uh, the mayonnaise, like when he would make a turkey sandwich or something, he would slather on the mayonnaise. When I would make myself a turkey sandwich, I would, you know, try to use as little mayonnaise as possible. And so when I started to see, like, those are his habits of just, you know, he puts on as much as he wants. I started to say, maybe that's a better way to do it because my way's not working for me. And I started to look at other cultures too. And I started to see that, you know, there are a wide variety of ways, you know, cultures eat and they have good health. You know, like there are some cultures that eat really high carb. There are some that eat really high protein and, and they all seem to be fine. And then I also started to look back through history and I thought, you know, really up until very recently, historically speaking, we didn't know how many carbs were in something. We didn't know how many grams of protein. We didn't know how many calories were in something. We just kind of ate the food. And nowadays, even though we have all this information, we're obese. So, so there's some sort of disconnect there. But in my head, I kept thinking, you know, well, maybe carbs really are bad. And then I started to try to prove myself wrong. I also started to look at edge cases, you know, kind of like different diets that seemed ridiculous, but still helped people to lose weight. For example, Mark Hobb went on the Twinkie diet. He's a nutrition professor and he lost weight, lost 27 pounds and uh, improved his lipid profile just from like eating snack cakes. John Cisna is a science teacher and he lost 56 pounds eating at McDonald's every day. And I started to look at nature too. Like honey is pure sugar and you know most fruits and vegetables are very high in carbs. And my conclusion from all that was I'm not going to worry anymore about what I'm eating. The deal I made with myself was as long as I'm losing weight, and as long as I'm feeling really good, as defined by me, I, you know, I feel energetic and I'm not getting sick all the time. I just seem reasonably healthy. Then I'm not going to worry about it. Now, how did I implement this into my life? It was basically like reprogramming my mind after, you know, decades of, of all this stress and emotional things happening around food. And I think the key for me was just to be patient with myself and to, you know, let it be a process. And so when I would crave something, I would allow myself to eat it. And all I would tell myself is eat as much as you want and no feeling guilty afterwards is allowed. I just told myself, you know, eat until you're full and, and, and then, you know, be done with it. And first of all, the, the weird thing for me immediately was I had stopping power. Like previous to this, previous to this idea that no foods were forbidden, like if I would just tell myself, oh, well, take it easy on that cake. Like I wanted two or three pieces of cake. But when I just said, you can have as much cake as you want, I would sit there and eat, you know, one piece of cake and be full because I guess because I wasn't, you know, 
I didn't have all this stuff going on in my brain, like how much is too much and, and, you know, should I even be eating this? You know, instead it was just like, eat the food and eat however much you want of it. And really forbidden food being the sweetest that I think that there is something to that because nowadays when I walk through the grocery store, uh, you know, for our date nights, I'll go and I'll, you know, get, get uh, some sort of special thing to eat. And usually that includes some sort of dessert. But most of the time when I'm walking through the store, it's just kind of like, eh, you know, nothing, nothing really jumps out of me as like, oh, I gotta have that because nothing's forbidden. So I'm really paying attention to what do I really love and what do I really enjoy? And over the course of time, I noticed myself craving sweets less often. Nowadays, I think I crave more, you know, like cheeses and things like that than I do sweets. That's not to say that I don't eat sweets because I do and I and I certainly still love like peanut butter M&Ms and double stuffed Oreos, but it's just not something that's like a big deal to me anymore. Whereas it used to be this huge thing. And during the process of this, I, I tried to always be aware of any foods that I found myself like avoiding because of fear. So, you know, like for example, peanut butter ramen was one of those foods that seemed so decadent to me um, that I, I would feel kind of, you know, like afraid of it. And, and also it would make the scale go up by three or four pounds overnight because there was so much sodium in it. And that actually was a really educational thing for me because I started to realize when I, when I was just patient with the scale, I would note like, okay, I ate that on that particular day and the scale went up. But then, you know, I would, I would wait, you know, usually two or three days later, the scale was down, you know, or back where it, it you know, should have been. And then it would even go down further, you know, because I was still losing weight. And when I really started to understand that, that I really was losing weight over the course of time, it gave me so much freedom because I realized I can eat all the different foods. Like nothing need be off the menu. I believe this has been key to my success, both, you know, with actually getting the weight off, being able to stick to it over such a long period of time, because I was able to eat all the different foods and I never felt deprived. What I've observed with myself and with, with other people on really restrictive type diets, it's like when, when you've deprived yourself so much for so long, then you just like kind of fall off the wagon and, and, and you really go the, to the other extreme. But when I just started to allow myself all the foods, it was like there was no extreme. So I never went to this, you know, bad place where it was like, oh, now I got to eat all the foods because I'm already eating all the foods. And I've been able to sustain uh, my weight loss, I think, because of the fact that I've just, I learned how to eat all the foods as I was going along instead of doing the thing I used to do, which is like, just try to delete foods from, you know, what I'm eating and then get down to my goal weight and then try to add those foods back in and then end up gaining it all back. So that's how I've learned how to eat all the food guilt-free. Again, it was a process for me. It took time. It took a lot of patience with the scale and not freaking out when, you know, when that you initially have that water weight jump. Uh, it's all about just staying patient and really consistent over time. And I'm curious to know if you're out there and you've started to allow yourself all the foods guilt-free, whereas in the past maybe you used to restrict a lot. How did that go for you? What were some tips and tricks that helped you along? Okay, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it helpful. If you're currently trying to lose weight and you're just having a hard time, check out my Slow and Steady Success Academy. There you'll find a course called Intermittent Fasting for Weight Loss 101, where I take you through the entire process from start to finish and how to implement intermittent fasting successfully in your life for weight loss. The link is in the description. The All Access Pass to Slow and Steady Success Academy is a monthly subscription plan that gets you access to every course that is currently available in this academy as well as any that will become available in the future. Also, you'll get access to our private All Access Pass members-only Facebook group.